All right, as we look at budgeting and forecasting, I want to walk you through this conceptual exercise to give you a sense of how a company would go about actually building out next year's forecast. Over here on the left-hand panel, we have some assumptions. We're going to just start with these. They don't come from anywhere. We're just going to make them up as the basis of what we're going to do in the follow-on calculations. First off, simple income statement. Show this company had $2.4 million in sales revenue, about just under a million and a half in cost of goods sold, another 400000 or so in admin expenses. Good news is they pulled in a little over half a million dollars in operating income. It also notes that we had sales of 150,000 units. And then tucked down here is one of the more important pieces we'll need for our model. It says, we sell the units for $16 a year, but we're also going to do that next year. So there's one of the key variables, because when you boil it down, sales is simply a matter of units that you sell times their sales price. Well, that's going to give us the price. It's going to be 16 they also mention the variable cost per unit at $10 and the fixed cost at $425,000, which if you kind of just put a line under that, you can kind of say, I add those together, I get the regression line, right? Which is $10 times number of units plus $425,000 is the total cost. Now, let's look at the revenue side, right? When we look at a forecast, that's what we have to do is build out the revenue side and build out the cost side. Basically, we have to almost go line by line and say, I know what it was now, what's it going to be next year? Well, the company did an analysis and they figured out that the growth rate could vary anywhere from 6 on the high end all the way down to negative 2. But they did assign us probabilities. They think the most likely outcome is 6%. At least they say there's an 80% chance we'll end up in the positive, but there is a 20% chance we could backstep and end up with negative growth. Well, all we have to do for each of these, and if you want to make this note, is it's all about multiplication. We're going to take each probability times the growth rate, add those multiplied amounts up and we're going to come up with this an overall growth rate of 2.4 percent which makes sense when you look at the numbers that they use that something around two and a half seems to be in the middle now if I then take the 150 and I'm just going to add in that 2.4 percent growth we can assume well if I sold 150,000 units and I'm going to grow by 2.4 percent should be selling 153,600 units which means we now have the pieces to make our revenue estimate, right? I now know how many units I've got, 153.6, and I know that my sales price is $16 a unit. If I multiply those together, I'm gonna end up right here. Now you notice, this is gonna be a sensitivity analysis. For now, don't worry about those extra columns, just pay attention to the one in the middle. We call that 100%, meaning we think that's the, the base case scenario. That's what we're basing all of this off of. So for this one, we're saying, yep, with 153,600 units at $16 a unit, we believe we'll have just under $2.5 million in revenue. Okay, now what about the expense side? Well, we note here that, yep, we've got a bunch of fixed costs, rent, insurance, property, taxes, so on and so forth. Thankfully, fixed costs are easy. They're fixed. No matter what happens, pretty sure it's still going to be 425000 What you'll note here is it is 425000 and I'm just going to do arrows both ways to show that regardless of what might happen, if sales were a little more than we expect, if sales were a little less than we expect, it makes no difference. We're still going to have $425,000 in fixed costs. That just leaves the variable cost. Now, if we looked at our formula, we'd say, okay, well, that should be $10 a unit. But they add in one little wrinkle. They say there's a learning curve. The learning curve just says the more of them we make, the better we get at making them. And the better we get at making them, the cheaper we can do them for. Apparently, we believe that thanks to that learning curve, we can cut the cost. We think we can actually produce them not for $10 a unit, but now $9.50 a unit. So we're going to use that over here to figure out this cost. Now, variable cost, just like sales, is units times price, if you will. The price we figured out is $9.50. What's the units? We already figured that out, too. It's $153,600. That gives me the last piece, right? There's my variable cost right there in the middle. And if I add them together, I believe I'm going to do quite well for myself. I only had operating income of 535. Now I'm moving up to 573. But a lot of companies would say, that's good. We get that. Now play me best case, worst case. Give me a bleaker picture. Give me a more positive one. And so we have these sensitivities, right? We have these down here, which are negative. What if we were 5% lower than we think? What if we were 10% lower than we think? And then up here, let's paint the rosier picture with a plus sign. 5% higher, 10% higher. Well, as I mentioned earlier, fixed costs don't change. 
So what is going to change? Well, the revenue will drop down, right? If we assume we sell 5% fewer items, we're going to have 5% fewer revenue or 10% fewer or 5 or 10% more. The same should happen to variable costs. Since variable cost is based on units, if we cut the number of units we sell by 5%, that's the bad news. At least the silver lining is, well, at least we don't have to run up that cost. So we can do these scenarios to say, well, even if we're off by 10% on the wrong side of it, we're still going to have operating income of 473, not bad. If we end up 10% better, we're really going to make out. We're going to end up with 673. So a company can look at this analysis and say, well, even if we're being really, really conservative, still looks pretty good. But if things go a little better than we expect, we could be really good. So this gives you a sense of how you'd build a budget and then how you could apply sensitivity analysis to that budget.